people are already talking about the third wave, Dr. Lehria, and um, uh, a lot, lot of doctors now are talking about how it is going to impact children. Uh, what is your view on it? Is there any scientific evidence to suggest this? What is your take? So uh, third wave and any other subsequent wave is a reality. What we don't know when it would happen and what would be the extent. When India was in the beginning of the second wave, there were 78% population which were susceptible. When India would be uh, out of second wave and by then there would be around 30 to 50% of population which will be susceptible, which is a smaller pool. Alongside the vaccination is being scaled up, so the susceptible pool will still decline. So as long as there is a susceptible pool until everybody is vaccinated, there is a risk of increase in the cases. And this increase in cases could happen at the one particular one or few states or even at district level. But whenever after a flattening of the curve, there would be rise in the cases, no matter what is the level of rise, uh, it will be called third wave. So third wave is likely to happen as long as susceptible population there. Now, most likely this wave or this rise can happen somewhere late 2021 or early 2022. The reason is that uh, we know after natural infection, the person is protected for the period of eight to 11, eight to 10 months, so to say, broadly. And people who are getting infected in March, April, and May, they would be protected till the period of November and December 2021. However, they can still again become susceptible. And that's where the susceptible pool will increase and vaccination will play a role. Now coming to the second part, whether children would be affected or not. Uh, I think there has been a narrative which has been created by a few individuals who have worked in the hospital setup. But what we need to remember that uh, what as a individual practitioner or a what is seen at the particular setup is very different from when somebody look at the bird's eye view or entire overview. We know that uh, through the evidence from the different countries that uh, none of the subsequent wave affected children disproportionately. There is neither a clinical evidence nor epidemiological uh, evidence. We also know that government of India, Niti Aayog, uh, in uh, late April 2021, released a report based upon hospital data where they indicated that while in the first wave of the total cases, only 4.2% were in the children. In the second wave, this number increased to 5.8%, which is only marginal increase. There is no indication this number gives that children would, are getting far affected. Another evidence is that uh, there, are, num there have been a number of zero survey in the states at the national level. And all of the zero surveys have found that proportion of infections in the children is very similar to the infections in the adult age group. Now, I also want to explain that uh, why with the similar rate of infection, children do not got, get severe disease. The reason is that the SARS-CoV-2 latches or get attached to the a particular type of receptors, which are called ACE2 receptors, angiotensin conversion enzyme, receptors. Now, these receptors are underdeveloped in the children, which means they are not sufficient quantity in the children, and which is a very good thing for, a good thing for children. So the virus, while get in, uh, infect children and it's found in their nose and throat and edgepharynx, but since these receptors are very little or minimal in the children, the virus cannot get to, into their lungs, and that's why they do not got, get sick. Now, there is no evidence that uh, this situation has changed. Even with the newer strains which have been reported, uh, variants of concerns which have been reported have not been found to have increased affinity for these receptors or cause a severe, serious disease in the children. So in short, there is no reason, no evidence till now that children would be affected. Having said that, uh, I would say that uh, uh, we should not be alarmist or create panic, but it will be a good idea to prepare for all eventuality. But it does not mean that our entire focus should be on the children. That will be a big mistake. Uh, even vaccination for children is not uh, that kind of priority. Of course, uh, there would be a point of time when vaccination would be required. But we know that children have a very good immune defense system. They get less serious disease. So immediate priority should be vaccinating adult population. We also know one thing that currently available vaccines 
they at the age decline with the, uh, the rate of adverse event is higher for example the adverse event in a 60 year old or 50 year old is relatively lower than adverse event with the existing vaccine for the 30 year or 25 year old and as we go toward the younger age group the adverse event of vaccines are relatively higher so why put children at the risk of vaccinating while they do they do not have that kind of risk of developing disease of course children will require vaccine but uh, even that is being discussed that uh, the vex right vaccine profile for children is likely to be very different like uh, nasal vaccine which can help in uh, providing immunity but also can stop transmission so it will be worth waiting that uh, a good uh, and appropriate vaccine becomes available and which is administered to the children rather than vaccinating children in hurry putting them additional risk rather than providing them any benefits